How do you make a burst of flash coincide with the camera's shutter? Well, that's called flash synchronization, or flash sync for short. And you would have probably noticed that with the majority of digital cameras, there is a limit to what that shutter speed can be. But things are changing, and with advancements in electronic, leaf, and global shutters, we're now able to achieve much higher flash sync speeds. But first, we need to understand how conventional shutters work, like elevator doors opening and closing, but to catch light, not people. Oh. That light or photons then hit the camera's digital sensor and the generated electrical signals are turned into an image. How that image looks depends on how long the shutter was open for. Open for longer and you have blur. But if we open and close the shutter very quickly, then you can freeze the action. One lets more light in and the other cuts more light out. And we can compensate for that with the other camera mechanism called the aperture or by increasing ISO. The amplification of the signal from the sensor effectively increasing sensitivity to light. But when it comes to using flash, we have a problem because we need to get the timing of the shutter doors to open in time with the burst of flash. Now with a really slow shutter speed, this isn't really an issue because I could open the shutter door, the flash could fire, and then the shutter can close. But on a very long shutter speed like that, it could also let in too much daylight, overexposing the image. For most cameras, the maximum shutter speed is 1 4,000th of a second, fast enough to freeze the most insane action. But on most cameras, Flash can't synchronize with the shutter speed if the shutter speed is over 1 250th of a second, or the maximum sync speed. As a shutter gets faster, it can no longer operate as doors opening and closing. It essentially has to work as a slit scanning across the sensor. Now that's great for cutting out the right amount of daylight and freezing your subject pin sharp, but how do you get the flash to combine with a tiny slit? Well, you don't. And the result is this. You can see that the shutter itself has now become part of the photo as it was actually in the way during the burst of flash. So even though the burst of flash is much faster than the designated shutter speed, it just can't expose the whole sensor in one go at higher shutter speeds. Leaf shutters work differently. The shutter is in the lens and looks much like an aperture. The mechanics of a leaf shutter mean they can sync with flash even up to 1 4,000th of a second, which is great if you're shooting fashion outdoors and trying to obscure significant amounts of daylight. Sadly, leaf shutters usually only come in more expensive medium format lenses. So for 35 mm cameras, manufacturers came up with a clever solution called high speed sync. One of the ways they did this was to actually increase the burst of flash period so that it lasted for as long as the slit took to scan across the whole sensor. This can be done with one single longer burst of flash or very rapid multiple bursts of flash. But the downside of this is an effective loss of flash power because nearly 70% of the sensor is covered up during the entire burst of flash meaning 
that the camera settings have to be adjusted and other aspects compromised, such as increasing the aperture to let more light through, resulting in shallow depth of field images. Now I have covered most of this in a previously popular video that I made some 10 years ago, but something's changed. Yes, I've got much better looking, older, fatter and balder, but technology has also changed and for the first time in stills camera history, Sony have introduced something called a global shutter. It's actually not even a shutter at all. Instead, they've done away with the need for a trap door or shutter, and they are now using something called an electronic shutter. Rather than a trap door letting photons squeeze through, they are now essentially just turning the whole sensor on and off for a given period of time. But electronic shutters have been around for some time, I hear you say. And you'd be right. But unfortunately, standard electronic shutters worked in much the same way as conventional mechanical shutters, as only part of the sensor could be exposed at one time. This was due to the huge processing power needed to process the signals from all those photons hitting the sensor. It just couldn't handle it all simultaneously meaning we were left with a similar problem of a scan across the sensor, but this time there was just no shutter in the way. So if you went above the maximum sync speed on an electronic shutter, the flash would fire, but only part of the sensor was actually active when it did. And you'd be left with this, the same. But then, just like a tax rebate, Thank you. Something magical happened. Along came the Sony A9 III, a stills camera with something called a global shutter. A camera with enough processing power that it could turn the whole sensor on and off from speeds lasting minutes right up to a staggering 1 80,000th of a second. And because the whole sensor is going on and off as one, it means the whole image is recorded as one. No more wobbly lines recorded, no more slits of light, and less banding from high frequency flickering lights. Plus the ability to choose any flash sync speed you like. But before we start celebrating, it's worth noting that now your concern will be to ensure that the shutter speed you selected wasn't so fast that it didn't actually leave time for the flash burst to be recorded. For example, it's no good selecting a 1 20,000th of a second shutter speed if the burst of flash is only going to last 1,000th of a second. Otherwise, overall, you'd only be capturing 1 20th of the flashlight that you expected, and that would spoil your party. 